Uh, I'm going to talk about some recent research as well, conducted in the winter and fall of last year. Um, and whether you think about this the way that the cognitive linguists do, somebody like Deborah Tannen who talks about people as veterans of perception, or whether you understand it the way Roger Shank does in his work on artificial intelligence, and they talk about experience as stored in mind stories about how the world works, or whether you think about it the way the Heath brothers do, if you've read their, their recent book, about people's guessing machines. Um, what we're interested in is how the pictures in people's heads, Walter Lippmann talked about this in the early 20th century, how the pictures in people's heads, how these mental models that people have interact with incoming information. And how does that interaction work? And what does it produce in terms of public thinking? So we're really interested in this interaction between incoming information and cultural models in people's heads and the guessing machines that people utilize to make meaning out of their world. And in this case, the world is digital media learning. So some of what I'm going to say may be a little bit counterintuitive. So we did, so this research really has three components. One was a set of deep cultural interviews with, and cognitive interviews with a group of experts that we worked with MacArthur on identifying. Uh, a second phase of the research was to talk to the general public. Uh, and this again happened across the country. In, in what the cultural anthropologists and cognitive linguists talk about as cognitive elicitation. I won't bore you with that, we have stuff that you can read about that. And the third piece of it is uh, a content analysis of media with regards to digital media and learning. And we're going to sneak in a little bit about early child development research that we've been doing with the Harvard Center for the Developing Child. So the expert view. Well, of course, digital media folks believe that utilization of digital media can improve educational outcomes. Some of this is not going to sound terribly radical to you, but you're going to be surprised to find that it is a bit radical to the general public. Um, that digital media, media is personal and collaborative. It can be personalized, but also there can be lots of peer-to-peer -peer interaction and collaboration. That it can increase student engagement, exposure to digital media, and that it can connect school and school-based learning to the real world. Now, none of this should be surprising to you. You all are the experts, the type of people that we talk to. So the idea is that if you connect digital media and its entailments with the concept of learning and its entailments, can the public put them this together in meaningful ways? And what we're going to suggest is that they cannot. And in fact, the response is, don't bring that stuff into our schools. Exactly. Wow. Okay, so there's a disconnect here that in seven or eight slides I'm going to try to explain. So how does this happen? First off, when you talk to ordinary citizens, they think that digital media is about entertainment and it is a luxury, meaning it is not a part of a formal educational experience. It is artificial, it is inauthentic, and it is the opposite of manual. There's not any doing involved in it. As a result, it is perceived as being passive. Now remember, the, think about what I just showed you, all the things that you experts tell us that it in fact can do. It's dangerous. Lots of nasty people out there in the world, and all of us who have kids have all kinds of rules about who they can talk to on Facebook and Twitter, and what kind of websites they can go on, and what kind of applications they can use. The end game is that the cultural assumptions about digital media are dissonant from or with the expert understanding of the relationship between digital media and learning. So how do they think about learning? That was about digital media, now how do they think about learning? Well, learning is hard, should be hard, must be hard. Hard by hard, I mean difficult. Thus, it's exclusionary. Puts many things outside the definition in this sort of conception of what real education is about. Learning, more is better. It's a quantity model. 
right? Dump in as much stuff as you can to kids. Teach them Latin at two years old, right? It is teacher-centric. It cannot be learning if there is not a teacher front and center. And as much as the professor in me is pained to admit this, I bet there are some people think that it is learning. And interestingly enough, people see individuals, that is students, and teachers as responsible for the acquisition of the learning. As a result, they make, it makes it very difficult to think about a role for public policy. So what do you get? You ask the public to think about digital media and learning? <laughs> <laughs> a, to <laughs> a toxic stew or brew or combo. <laughs> It doesn't belong in school. Real, real need, learning needs to avoid the distractions that digital media brings, and it must be formal and real. So when we then went and looked at the media, what did we find? Well, this is a sort of a concatenation of a paper, actually Shannon, who's here in the audience, did on uh, content analysis of digital media and learning. It's about adults and it's about business and business applications. It is about danger, risks, and distractions. It's rarely, interestingly enough, about children. And it's not typically about learning or educational benefits. So now let's throw one more little piece of it. What, what are the entailments? Remember I sort of had this, I, this sort of conception of each of these things comes with a set of cognitive entailments. Well, what do, we, what do people think about early child development? It's about keeping kids safe, and now it fits with, right, and the digital media is dangerous because the community is a predator, therefore the role for the external community is concealed. Discipline and structure are paramount. Development is natural and automatic. We've done a, a, about a four or five year study of, of early child development with the Harvard Center for the Developing Child. And what, we've done how many focus groups we've done and we've tested this empirically, quantitatively. People say things like, um, well, kids are like ticking clocks. If you just wind them up and leave them alone, right, they'll come out at 14 or 15 or 16 develop. Or every kid learns how to tie their shoe, every kid learns how to go to the bathroom. It's automatic. Therefore, if that is the working model, any intervention seems redundant and unnecessary. Thus, digital media threatens development. So now, how do we get digital media and learning together in the public mind and find a way to connect it to the very uh, robust literature on early child development? So we have to make it such that digital media is for learning, it's for hands-on learning, it facil facilitates participation, and it is, in fact, developmentally appropriate. Thus. We're able to use it as a tool in early learning. We can bridge the formal and informal learning silos. Um, we can teach children in a peer-based network way. Again, the sort of collaborative, engaged, participatory way. In that way, kids now are geared for problem solving. And this now becomes a student-centric model as opposed to a teacher-centric model. So, I've got zero minutes left, and so I'm going to tell you what you all should be doing. You should be telling stories. Take your time, it's okay. Uh, okay, she's going to be like, oh, big sign of the zero. I don't know if that was time or you were trying to insult me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you never know when you come over this side of town. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to start telling stories about how digital media is connected to foundational skills because people absolutely categorically don't believe it is, especially those seen as basic, the three R's. We have to talk about how children come together via social media to solve problems and to contribute to communities, for civic participation and engagement. <laughs> We have to tell stories about how it is a very hands-on learning experience and why that is good, both pedagogically and developmentally. We have to talk about stories or develop stories of children interacting with their environment through digital media. 
And there's a lot of, that came out of the expert interviews, this idea of mentored learning. And, I, and, and certainly that's not present at all in media depictions of digital media. And so we have to sort of get somehow in the story that teachers are mentors for rather than, rather than purveyors of student learning. And we've got to get across these time and space boundaries that confront education reform. And I think with that, I'm done. Thank you.